Hello. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to multiply two linear expressions. Let's take a look at our first example. If I were going to multiply 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 5. Now, there are various strategies for multiplying these two expressions. I'm going to be using the area model. The area model starts by simply drawing a rectangle. We're going to let the first expression 3x plus 1 represent the length of this side of the rectangle. Now, since the expression 3x plus 1 has two terms, we partition the rectangle into two parts. The second expression, 2x plus 5, we're going to let represent this top dimension. And again, it has two terms. And so we're going to partition this rectangle into two parts. Now, the entire rectangle has now four smaller parts. This is going to help us do all the multiplication that we need for these two expressions. We're going to start with the first rectangle. The first rectangle has a length of 2x and a length of 3x. So when we multiply those two parts together, 2 times 3 is 6, and x times x is x squared. Let's look at the second rectangle. It has a length of 5 and a length of 3x. When I multiply these two together, I get 3x times 5 is 15x. Let's take a look at the third rectangle. It has a length of 2x and a length of 1. So 2x times 1 is 2x. And then the last rectangle has a length of 5 and a length of 1. And 1 times 5 is 5. So our original goal was to multiply 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 5. And we've used an area model to do that. So we need to be able to write our final answer. So we know that we have a 6x squared from the area of the first rectangle. And then we have 15x a 2x, and a 5. And when we add them all together, we have the area of the entire rectangle. Now notice that two of these terms are like terms. So we have a 15x, and we have a 2x. We can simplify this further by adding those two terms together. So 15x and 2x, gives us 17x. So our final answer, 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 6x squared plus 17x plus 5. And that's how you multiply two linear expressions. Let's do another example. So in this example, we're going to multiply x plus 7 times 4x plus 1. All right, we're going to start by drawing our rectangle again. I'm going to label this first dimension x plus 7, partition that into two parts, and then label this dimension 4x plus 1, and partition that into two parts. We're going to be looking at each individual rectangle. So let's look at the one that's 4x times x. And when we go to multiply that, remember that the coefficient for this x is a 1. So 4 times 1 is 4, and x times x is x squared. Now for the second rectangle, we have 1 and we have 1x. Now, 1 times 1x is 1x. For the third rectangle, we have a 4x times 7. 
4x times 7 is a 28x. And for our last rectangle, we have a 1 by 7, and 1 times 7 is 7. So the area model gives us the four pieces for this expression, but we do need to add it together to get the total area. So I have 4x squared plus 1x plus 28x plus 7. Looking again at the fact that we have some like terms sitting right here, we have a 1x and a 28x, we can add these two together. 1x and 28x is 29x. So our final answer, what is x plus 7 times 4x plus 1? It's 4x squared plus 29x plus 7. So I have a couple of examples that'll help us with unique situations. This third example, let's take a look if we have 2x times x plus 4. So again, I'm going to use the area model. Now my first expression is a 2x. And it's only one term, so I'm not going to be partitioning the rectangle. The top dimension, we're going to write x plus 4, and it has two terms, and so I'm going to partition that into two parts. So this area model looks a little different because we only have two smaller rectangles instead of four. But the area model still works to help us use the distributive property and multiply. So let's take a look at our first rectangle. It has a dimension of 1x and a dimension of 2x. 1 times 2 is 2 and x times x is x squared so I get 2x squared. And then if we take a look at our second rectangle we have 4 times 2x. 4 times 2 is 8 so 4 times 2x is 8x. We still have to add our um, areas together to get the final answer. So I'm going to have a 2x squared plus 8x. And in this case, there are no like terms, so that is our final answer. Now, one more example. What happens if there is a negative involved? So let's take a look at the expression of x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2. Again, we're going to start with our rectangle. Our first expression, x minus 3, is going to represent this side. It has two terms, so we're going to partition that into two parts. And then we have x plus 2. It has two terms, and so we'll partition it into two parts. And for this example, we still have the four smaller rectangles. So let's go through each rectangle. In this case, we have a 1x times another 1x. Now, 1 times 1 is 1. x times x is x squared. So I'm going to put 1x squared. For the second rectangle, I have 2 times 1x. And that gives me 2x. For this third rectangle, this length is a 1x. And this is where it's a little unusual to say a length is negative 3. Because in actuality, we can't have a length of negative 3. But we're still going to use the area model as a structure to help us multiply these. So 1x times negative 3 gives me a negative 3x. And then for our last rectangle, we have a 2 times the negative 3, and 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. So the area model has helped us multiply, but we have to go in and write our final answer. So I'm going to add all of the smaller areas up. So I have a 1x squared, and you'll notice that I didn't write the 1 because we typically don't. But I have a 1x squared, I have a 2x, I have a minus 3x, 
and I have the minus 6. Now, in this case, we again have these like terms sitting here, a 2x minus 3x. So we're going to add those together, and we're going to get 2x minus 3x is going to give me a negative 1x. So my final answer is x squared minus x minus 6. So that's what we do in case there is subtraction involved. All right, so in this video, we've shown you how to use the area model to multiply two linear expressions together.